Hi everyone, Bren here. Welcome to this week's garden update from my very late winter patch located in New South Wales, Australia. And this week I got a couple of areas sorted out which I'm quite pleased with and I'm so looking forward to showing them to you. One is an extremely important space at this time of year, my seed starting setup. So we'll take a look at that. And then also I worked on revamping, reorganizing, whatever you call it, the small space container garden. And it's looking much more presentable. I cannot wait to show you how it turned out. Anyway, please just grab yourself a tea or coffee, sit back, Relax for a few minutes and let's get into it now. With spring approaching in approximately three weeks, I thought this week it was a good idea if I got my seeds and seedlings organized. My setup is fairly basic and pretty inexpensive. I have these two brand new greenhouses which I purchased from Bunnings. They were, I think it was like $30 each. And then I have one here from last year, same size. It's just missing the um, cover because the cover got absolutely trashed. It doesn't last very long, but the frame itself seems still quite sturdy. And this is where I have a lot of my seedlings, particularly the anemones and ranunculus, which really need to get into the ground. These are in a north facing position. So it really takes full advantage of the sun and up against the house here with the bricks. The bricks help to retain some heat so it keeps this area a lot warmer at night time compared to other more exposed spots in the garden and that's what I really want. I want this to be a nice cozy space to get this happening. Seed germination. Actually this is very exciting. It only just happened this week. In here I have some columbine stock and they are beginning to sprout. Now the thing with the stock is I'm a little bit concerned about them because they can take quite a long time from germination to harvest and stock are generally a cool loving cuff flower. Now if I follow the instructions on the pack it's saying I think it's like 140 days until the bloom is developed which is quite a long time like that works out I did a quick google search I think it's near December or the end of December and I'm not sure I'm worried that I'm taking a little bit of a risk giving up so much garden space to this many plants so I put in approximately I think it was 50 seeds on each side so it will take up a good few meters squared and it's risky because I don't know if these plants will enjoy that really hot summer weather that we get. I think I should have sown these back in autumn time. I don't know if I will end up planting them. There's cornflower pink in here, nigella white. I have shown you most of these. These are nigella blue and then here this is a freshly sown tray of Queen Anne's Lace White on one side and then the opposite side is Queen Anne's Lace Chocolate. Then down here this is where I have the tree dahlias. Remember I got that cutting for free from Tim's Garden Centre in Campbelltown. You guys said that if I just chop it up like this into a few pieces lay it down on the soil and I should start seeing sprouts hopefully soon in the next few weeks as this weather warms up. Then I have over here, I have the Fever View, which is gonna be my main filler flower this year. Down here, I bought some plants. These are a Shasta Daisy. Then over here, I have some more Status. I actually sowed these during the week too. I've got the Purple Attraction, and on the other side is Twilight Lilac. And up here, I've started sowing some zinnias. It's a bit of an experiment. I don't normally sow them this early in the season, but again, like the sunflowers I spoke about last week, I just wanna see if I can get them blooming earlier. And why not? It's just one tray. If it works, it works, and that would be amazing. If it doesn't, well, at least I gave it a shot. I have a whole tray of straw flowers here. Remember I said to you I was gonna put them directly in the ground? Well, I will still do that, but I also wanna have some here in a tray that I can you know, pinch out, pot on, and have some extra plants if I plan to put that them into the new cuff flower garden that I have. 
Then I've got some Status Special Mix. Oh, I've already shown you these, the Sunflowers. This is a whole tray of Snapdragon. No germination on it yet. I do need to give it another spray because it's looking a little bit dry. And then in here in this little space, I have the tomatoes and chilies and I do have a few more empty spots there that I want to fill up because I haven't started my eggplants yet so I want to give them a shot maybe this weekend I'll try and get them done. The reason why I started these a lot earlier like you're looking at tomatoes, chilies, and soon to be capsicum and eggplants is because I find the seeds for these summer heat loving edible crops can take a lot longer to germinate than other plants. For example, when it comes to cucumbers or zucchinis, peas, sweet corn, oh, pumpkins too. I find if you wait until spring, those seeds tend to germinate within a matter of days. So I'm going to wait a little bit longer before I sow them. But for the moment, I am just managing this bunch. And then for anyone new here to the channel, if you're wondering why I'm growing so many cut flowers, that's because last year I started a new business called Brands Blooms. And I need this amount to get lots of stems so I'm able to continue the business again this spring summer. I cleared out this area, which is also north facing by the side of the house during the week. The builder asked me to clear it up because the air conditioning unit is going to be moved somewhere along here. But once the air conditioning unit is in, I'm gonna have hopefully some space there where I may be able to put some of my seedlings once they get a bit larger, but not quite ready to go into the beds. So I'm pretty happy that I got this done. Now, this is where I actually had all my succulents and my succulents are looking so pathetic at the moment i'll show you them it's really embarrassing i was really into suckling succulents at one stage but i don't know what happened i feel you know what i think it was i think i thought like they didn't need that much attention and i always put them at the lowest priority um you know on the to-do list out in the garden and now they just look dreadful like they're really <laughs> suffering from the neglect hopefully i'll be able to get back into it with them find a new spot for them and get them looking better again the container garden has had a bit of a facelift as you can see what i did was i used that tiered metal framing that the succulents were on and that's what I just showed you and pop them here into this area and then I was able to get some of these pots and containers elevated and I think it looks quite nice at the moment but once these pots all fill out I think it's going to look absolutely beautiful very colourful and very productive space with lots of food to be able to pick from here too. I want this to be an area that attracts lots of different pollinators so it keeps my edible crops like this kale and behind it the chard nice and healthy. I'd love it to be an area that looks pretty and beautiful and I'm even thinking maybe I'll get some nasturtiums and sow some seeds here so that we have trailing plants hanging over the side and it's just one big wall of green and I really don't mind if you don't see this anymore the metal maybe that should be my goal so that the metal is nowhere in sight now i have noticed that some of the plants are looking a little bit miserable i did give them a liquid feed during the week and that's the thing with containers if you think about it when you plant a container they're really reliant on you as a gardener because all the nutrients they receive are either in the potting mix that you put in here or any liquid feeds that you give them so I know this will be a little bit more work to manage than some crops I just put directly in the ground, but I think it will be worth it. Lots of things to pick, like here we have some of the onions. I think they're the potato onions, the ones that like clump up. And then here I've got some fennel, some herbs. Another great advantage to having a container garden is that you're able to swap around pots as needed. So for example, all along this row, I have some spring flowering bulbs and they'll be finishing up their display middle to late spring. And all I have to do is pull out the pots and replace them with containers that have some lovely annual 
summer sun loving flowers that will add to this area and give it a nice pop of colour. Well that is it for this week everyone. Thank you so much for watching. This weekend I plan on sowing some more seeds which I will show you next Friday and I want to start working on the raised garden bed area because at the moment it feels like it's a bit of a dumping ground for old pots, containers, oh trellises I don't know you name it it just has so many random things dumped in that space I really need to get it sorted out because before I know it in a blink of an eye it's going to be spring anyway take care see you next Friday